Hello everyone and welcome back to the best show on the internet about science and oh boy do we ever have some beautifully progressive science for you today. Now, many of you may be dreaming of a future where you get married, you have a family, you grow old and die surrounded by loved ones and as nice as that may sound, I'm sorry to say, but science doesn't support your dreams. I recently came across this video of two people telling us why we shouldn't have kids according to science. So if like us, your family and friends are always pestering about when you're gonna have a kid and you're like, mm, better not, here's some scientific evidence as to why you probably shouldn't have a kid. When you're gonna have a kid. When you're gonna have a kid. I wonder if anyone's broken it to them. I guess you're not supposed to assume these days, so let's move on. The crux of this video is essentially Focus on you and your happiness because, according to scientific evidence, babies make you miserable. They make you argue more. Research shows that marital satisfaction plummets after your first child. This is often due to clashing ideas of how to raise your child. Sleep less. But yes, your kids will ruin your sleep. Those little brats cost money. The kids are expensive. And employers even get more sexist when you have kids as a woman. If you're a woman with a child, you make 3% less than a woman that is childless. So don't waste your time investing in some little monsters when, let's face it, painting your nails baby blue instead of painting a crib room will basically fulfill you the same way in the long run. Now, I never thought I'd look for parental advice from a gay couple who are statistically far less likely to have kids, but hey, I'm pretty progressive and they have totally objective, totally unbiased science on their side. So let's have a look at the cold, hard, empirical data that these two managed to compile for us when they weren't too busy playing oppression Olympics with friends. First things first, let's take a look at marital satisfaction because honestly, who cares about costs and sleep if you feel fulfilled at the end of the day? Perhaps your relationship is in a rut and you think that kids might bring you closer together. Statistically, it will absolutely not. Research shows that marital satisfaction plummets after your first child and 70% of couples experience a big slump in their love life. So to back up this claim, they linked to a Bustle article citing seven more scientific reasons not to have children, which when you scroll through this article to look for this specific point, links you to an opinion piece on Psychology Today by psychologist Ellen Walker, author of, to no one's surprise, Complete Without Kids, which Honestly, the title of this book itself just sounds like some sort of coping mechanism to constantly convince herself she made the right decision because according to the reviews, it starts out with some compelling content and then just tumbles into her ranting for pages about how she's convinced her skiing trips would have sucked if she had kids to drag around on them. I just don't see this as valid data or even helpful. I'm sure this author isn't biased at all. We're off to an extremely scientific start here, lads. But regardless of slant, who really cares if you have the data to back you up? So let's check that out. And nope, no links, no citations. This is the end of the notorious rabbit hole of cross-referencing clickbait that eternally leads to no cited research. Apparently, much like her book, this is just an opinion piece by a seemingly bitter woman who has never had children. But I figured I'd be nice and do the work for these labs, so I did some digging and I found this study from Denver University. Though the study did observe a significant and sudden drop in marital satisfaction around the time of birth of the first child, co-author Scott Stanley noted that declines are somewhat normal in marriage and that the study doesn't capture the richer, longer lasting contentment that comes with building a family. Stanley noted that while there is a strain on the marriage from having children, a lot of couples gain something deeper while growing as a family. And in fact, a lot of the other studies linked here come to the exact same conclusion. All types of parents reported having more meaning in life than did their childless counterparts, suggesting that the rewards of parenting may be more ineffable than the daily highs or lows. Gee, it's almost like nobody ever said raising a child is a walk in the park. It's almost like humans endure short-term hardship for long-term fulfillment. Who would have thunk? Let's move on to the next point. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, if you're a woman with a child, you make 3% less than a woman that is childless. However, this is not true of men who make an additional 15% if they have kids compared to those without. Yeah. 
Having kids makes the world more sexist, you bigots. Better castrate yourselves now, because haven't you heard? The future is female, girl. Seriously though, saying that men make an additional 15% if they have kids sounds like you're saying they make more money because they have kids. That's right guys, don't ask your boss for a raise, just start popping out babies with all the girls everywhere and you'll just start seeing the cash rolling in. Uh, Correction, you'll probably see it roll out in the payments you have to make. Correlation does not equal causation. There could be multiple other reasons why men with children earn more than childless men, like the fact that higher earning men feel more financially stable and therefore will have a family. They have to work longer hours to support a larger family, and because women are more likely to choose a higher earning partner to father her children. And as for the difference between men and women, well, we're back to basic wage gap nonsense. Even the article cited by these guys mentions that the disparity can be attributed to differences in careers and work hours. It has nothing to do with how hard you work, how many hours you work, or the job you have, but the double standard idea that men are breadwinners and women are caregivers. Well okay then, I guess it has nothing to do with any of that. You, you may be wondering how the hell he came to this conclusion. Employers see fathers as committed and stable, whereas they see mothers as flaky and distracted. It looks like he has totally decided to throw away all other findings by the Bureau of Labor Statistics on women working less time and going into lower paying fields and just link this study called Getting a Job. Is there a motherhood penalty? And of course, there's also the one other reference from Business Insider that mentions employers may view motherhood as a signal of lower levels of commitment and professional competence, which I'm sure has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that 43% of highly qualified women with children leave their careers or the fact that even if they stay in their careers, by the time a mother's first child is 20, women have on average worked for four years less than men. There's just so much science here, I really can't handle it. It's just so scientific. Now, apart from stating the obvious, like the fact that kids are expensive and that parents get less sleep, which are typically sacrifices people make for things they like, these two wonderfully progressive gents continue their persuasive PSA against parenthood by citing overpopulation and environmental damage. Well, there are currently about 7.5 billion people on Earth, and in this second, four kids were just born. And many scientists collectively agree that if you factor in fresh water and the amount of food available, the Earth can only really hold 9 to 10 billion people. If you guys really cared about overpopulation, you would be supporting initiatives trying to reduce the astronomical birth rates in developing nations that are causing the bulk of overpopulation. But that would be racist, wouldn't it? So instead, you go around telling American millennials to go childless, who are strangely being simultaneously told that they need mass immigration to save them from the horrors of an aging population. So you guys really should at least give a shout out to the demographic of people that your video is most relevant to, third world immigrants who have significantly higher birth rates than native western populations. But once again, that wouldn't be very progressive, would it? And of course, how could I forget? the environment. Think about it from your carbon footprint. One kid in America is the equivalent of 106 kids in Haiti when it comes to how much carbon dioxide is produced in their life. So if you're trying to go green, you could go vegan, you could ditch your car, you could stop flying everywhere, or you could just not have a kid. You know what? That's a really good point. You can also reduce your carbon footprint if you just stopped eating and if you stopped exhaling all of that CO2 gas. In fact, the environment would be much better off if we all just killed ourselves. Go green. Saying that people should stop attending to their biological imperatives in order to save the environment isn't so much bad science as it is bad reasoning. But the last reason they give not to have children really gets to the crux of the matter. But kids bring so much joy into our lives, right? Well, sometimes research does show that if you wanted to have kids and have them, your life satisfaction can increase, but no more than people who are childless by their own choice. The study they're referencing here sampled 1.8 million Americans with and without children with statistical controls for background factors such as wealth, education, and health. The study found that the presence of a child has a small negative association with life evaluation. But once again, correlation does not equal causation. And we cannot infer from this that having children in your life causes lower life satisfaction. 
It might be the other way around, that people with lower overall life satisfaction are more likely to have children, possibly in hopes of increasing their life satisfaction. Or it may be even more complicated than all of that. All things controlled for, people with children take on more long-term responsibility over their lifetime than people without children. This means that people with children and people without children judge their lives on a very different metric. Those with children have to take into account how well they fulfilled their responsibilities as parents. They have to concern themselves not only with their own well-being, but the well-being of their children. And overall, parents are probably judging their life satisfaction on a much higher metric than non-parents. So the real question here probably goes a little beyond what scientific inquiry can capture. Having children isn't as much about satisfaction and happiness as it is about responsibility responsibility and meaningfulness. And as humans, we create meaning in our lives by restricting our lives in the form of responsibility. Take sex, for example. Sex only means something beyond carnal pleasures between two bodies when you restrict yourself to having sex only with someone you love. Interestingly enough, the research of the last study also found that parents experienced both more daily joy and more daily stress than non-parents. So even though the childless reported higher overall happiness, their lives weren't as dynamic and filled with the ups and downs that come with the responsibilities of parenthood. In other words, a happy life is not the same as a meaningful one. Certainly a life that is all ups without any downs will be happier, but is it a life worth living? The idea of meaningfulness seems to have gotten lost on our generation of liberal millennials who'd rather save up their money for the latest iPhone than invest in their children's future, or they'd rather spend time figuring out which of the 76 non-binary genders they truly are inside instead of spending that time raising a family. And I personally don't care what specifically you do with your life in regards to having kids, I'll make suggestions, but it's obviously up to you. But for me, and I may be different than the average person, it's my preference, I want to experience life to its fullest. The idea of having higher and lower ups and downs and having deeper purpose and meaning is something I would take a million times over, a stagnating just feeling of being okay and having a little extra pocket change. But beyond my little tirade, this show isn't about getting emotional and philosophical. This show is about science. And to conclude this episode, these two lads, while not being as bad offenders as the last episode, still failed miserably at it. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode, and I will see you guys next time back in the lab.